In 1956, Mankad and Roy got 413 runs for the first wicket against New Zealand. Then in 1958, Shubhash Gupte took nine wickets against the West Indies. But even after more than 27 years in Test cricket, India still had not beaten a full-strength side from any of the then major cricketing nations, namely England, Australia or the West Indies. Indeed, when Richie Benno's Australians, fresh from their facile 4-0 victory over England, arrived in India in 1959, India immediately lost the first test by an innings at Delhi. The next stop was Kanpur, where for the first time a test was being played on a turf wicket. Winning the toss on a wicket uh, which has been uh, newly laid is always an advantage it's because uh, you know it's not going to get any better, it's going to get worse. And this was a newly turf uh, laid wicket. Before that it was all always a matting wicket. And I couldn't see any um, grass or any turf or anything on it. And the wicket was also a little uh, dicey. It looked to me a little dicey, sort of softish. And I thought even if it did get dry as the day progressed or the next two, three days, it wouldn't get any better. So I plumped straight away uh, to bat on it first. I was a little disappointed, as I said. Uh, we didn't expect to be bowled out for 152, but uh, the wicket uh, was a little uh, untone uh, quantity-like, and uh, our boys also played a little indiscreet uh, shots, and uh, I was, uh, on the whole, not quite happy with uh, our performance of 152 runs. There was no point in bowling, uh, bowling medium pace or fast there. Uh, Davidson was a great and most versatile bowler, and um, he concentrated on spin there. You may remember, uh, those of you who uh, were at the match, that Neil Harvey caught, uh, let me see, I think it was Nari Contractor, uh, actually between his legs, turning away at uh, short leg from a sweep shot Contractor played. Well, Davidson bowled very well in uh, that match there, and he also bowled his spin in uh, later matches as well, depending on the pitch surface, but he was versatile, and that was why I used him in those conditions. Actually, we weren't as well equipped as, uh, as India in those conditions, nor did we have anyone who bowled as well as uh, Joseph Patel. He bowled um, as one would expect uh, an off-spinner of test match quality to bowl. I don't think Jasu was one of the great off-spinners of all time, but he was certainly a good enough bowler for us on that pitch. He was too good for us. And uh, he did exactly the job he was required to do and did it very well. You couldn't have asked for more. McDonald and Stevens did start uh, on a very promising note. Uh, I started with Fridhanath and myself. Well, I bowled a couple of tight overs, but that's about all. I didn't really make any uh, effect on the batman. So I brought, brought on Jesu Patel, who initially did not really bowl a perfect line. But, uh, you know, once he got into the groove, uh, he was supported by Polly Umigarai, put on Polly at the other end. And uh, he started to pitch a nice length. He beat the batsman a couple of times. And that's how, when he started striking, he really struck well. He was uh, turning, but I wouldn't say that much. Uh, the ball was not coming onto the bat. The ball was keeping a little low. And uh, he was, uh, Jasu Patel uh, has got a, a slightly uh, defect uh, in his wrist. He bowls more with the elbow and uh, not with the wrist as such. It wasn't quite perfect. The Australians were sort of, uh, you know, getting confused with the straight one and the one that uh, was coming away, uh, coming into the batsman. And uh, they were playing back to be on the safe side and getting beat in the bargain, either getting bowled or LBW. If there was any form of panic or nerves about it, it was induced by the excellent bowling from Jasu Patel. And, and I also remember, a long time ago though it was, that the Indian fielding was quite brilliant. So I think those two things combined uh, add up to far more than, uh, than any panic that might detract from the merit of uh, Jasu Patel's performance. He was, he was terrific in that game. And luckily for us, everybody chipped in with Nutty Contractor making a useful, as a matter of fact, that was the highest, 74 of the match. He got with uh, useful contributions from Nadkarni, Borde, Ramnath Kaney. They all chipped in. And we put up a side of a score of 291. Uh, given them 225 to, uh, to chase and uh, on the last day, the fourth and fifth inning, uh, fourth, fifth day and fourth inning. Once we had got uh, Harvey and O'Neill, uh, it was more or less curtains for, for them, you know. And uh, Paul Umrigar, as I said, he was also bowling a tight length 
and uh, he got uh, both his wickets of Harvey and O'Neill. And uh, there was nothing else thereafter. It was only a matter of time uh, when the rest of the wicket would fall. I would say it was a remarkable performance by any standards, uh, on any kind of wicket, by any bowler, let alone uh, Jesu Patel against Australians. And this Australian side was no uh, mean side. This was uh, one of the strongest sides ever uh, that was ever sent out, out of Australia. And I think performances uh, such as Jesu Patel's 9 and 5, uh, 14 wickets, uh, it's a fantastic performance. India batting poorly after winning the toss. The highest score there only 25 from Bapu Natkarni. Davidson, the chief wrecker, Richie Benno also among the wickets with his leg spin. In reply, McDonald 53, Neil Harvey 51, and a good innings lower down from Davidson 41. And there the famous figures of 9 for 69 from Jasu Patel. Nari Contractor playing a crucial knock of 74 in the second venture. Useful contributions lower down in the order. Davidson capturing 12 wickets in the match, 7 in the second. Finally, Australia crumbling for just 105 in the final innings. Umriga this time chipping in with 4 for 27. However, despite that creditable showing, India complete